to help get you ready for Wednesday's exam. Um, I put together this um, study guide and practice test. I also sent it to you um, in the weekend announcement, so hopefully you saw it there. Um, as far as the exam itself is concerned, um, the exam itself is 11 questions in total. And so um, I really try to be very conscious of it's not 11 questions and there are A, B, C, D, E on each question. There are 11 questions in total. Now, three of the questions are um, calculation box questions. So remember what we did when we had, you know, I give you the pH and we turn it into pOH and hydroleum and hydroxide concentration out of chapter 14. Three of the questions are like that. So yes, there are sub questions, but they all are off of the same calculation base. Um, so in total, there are 11 questions that includes a bonus question. The value of the exam is 50 points, but you can get 55. Um, it will be scaled up to 100, uh, just like your last two exams have been, just so that it can be score appropriately in terms of all the other exams themselves. All of the questions are fill in the blank or calculation questions. And it's roughly a 50-50 split. So roughly half of the exam is out of chapter 14. Roughly half of the exam is gas law, kinds of calculations like what we've been doing the past couple of days. The best way to prepare for those would be to go back and do those mastering assignments related to chapters 14 and 11, and to complete the last couple of quizzes, um, because those are directly related to these calculations. So all of that stuff has been in, in mastering for a little while now, um, the gases quiz is a bonus quiz. So any points that you earn on that quiz are going to be calculated and tabulated as bonus points, um, which should help your overall grade, especially if you do well. But even if you do poorly, you get some points, they're, they're going into the grade book out of zero. So that should help in general. Out of chapter 14, again, half of the exam, what we need to know are our definitions of assets and bases. So can we identify assets and bases based on formula? Acids start with hydrogen, bases end with hydroxide. Those would be the Arrhenius definitions, kind of the ones we've been using from a nomenclature standpoint most of the semester. But we also want to be able to identify by reactivity. That's where we got into that conversation of conjugates, acids and bases, conjugate acids, conjugate bases. Being able to identify in a reaction a conjugate pair, the two reacting species that are only separated by a hydrogen from each other. On the calculation side, we need to know how to calculate pH and pOH. We need to be able to convert between pH, pOH, um, hydronium concentration, hydroxide concentration. Know when something is acidic, know when something is basic by definition. On the reaction side, um, there is not going to be anything from a stoichiometry standpoint, but you should be able to recognize an acid-base neutralization reaction. You should be able to write an acid-base neutralization reaction. And you should be able to do some calculations off of it using the titration equation. So this is a little bit of a rehash of something that you saw on the last exam. And so you might want to go back to that question on the last exam because it's going to be very similar. Um, in terms of content and, and what you need to know. For the gases half, 
it's almost all exclusively focused on the gas laws. So we're looking really more at the calculations rather than the concepts. So can you convert between pressure units? Can you apply Boyle's law, Charles' law, um, Avogadro's law, the combined gas law, and the ideal gas law? Can you do what we just did? Use STP and the molar value conversion to solve stoichiometry problems. On the exam itself, you're going to be given a periodic table. You're going to be given this equation sheet, the same equation sheet that you had before, but now you can see that I have added this definition of molarity, although you won't need it for this particular exam. But you can see on this equation sheet itself, we've got the ideal gas law already put in there. We've got um, Boyle's law, Charles' law, Amonton's or Gay Lussac's law, Avogadro's law, the combined gas law, the titration equation. Pretty much the equations that you need are here. But I'm giving you one other thing. And that one other thing that I'm giving you in addition to that is I'm giving you the calculation box that we use in chapter 14 when we are doing the conversions from um one calculation to another and so all of these equations are on your equation sheet i'm just giving you a more condensed version of how to interpret between so when you get to those that question or those questions in the acid base part of the exam you should be able to hopefully have a slightly better idea of how to do and how to use the appropriate equations at the appropriate time. And so one thing that I would do as I'm studying and preparing for this is I'm going to put this in Blackboard for you, um, but have it by your side. Print off these um, materials, so go to the learning lab um, and print this, print the equation sheets, and just have them by your side as you're doing the exercises and getting ready for the exam itself. Have it, have those at your side as you're working on the homework assignments, as you're working on the quizzes related to this material so that when you know that you're dealing with a problem of this type, you know that you have exactly in front of you what you're going to have in front of you on Wednesday. And then the other part of this equation, this uh, study guide, these are sample practice problems. So using these um, practice problems um, is also good information. Um, and so one of the things I will be doing this afternoon, similar to what I did uh, before the second exam, I'm going to record myself doing all of these. And I'm going to post that recording to YouTube along with the actual key itself. Um, I'll put the key in Blackboard. I'll put the video in, I'll link the video in Blackboard as well. But what you could do and should do is if you're using this as a study guide, as a prep. Um, now, I put far more questions. Remember, I told you the exam itself is 11 questions. There are many more than 11 
questions in this study guide. Um, the point of giving you the extra work here is giving you extra practice. But I will go through every single one of these. I'll do all of the calculations out so that you have it there and you can use it uh, to help you get ready for the exam. Because I'll post sometime this evening. 